This is the InfoMoto podcast. Hi, folks. Welcome to InfoMoto podcast three. And uh, hopefully you've been uh, sticking up with everything we're doing. Um, and today I've got a very special guest, a <laughs> close friend of mine, probably uh, well known, uh, certainly through the 4x4 world. Yes. As, uh, John Ruth, better known as Ruthie, I guess. Yeah. Welcome, Ruthie. Thank you, sir. Lovely to have you. It's great to be here, mate. Mate, now you've come down to Melbourne specially for, uh, to have a few drinks with your mates, haven't you, basically? Well, yeah, exactly that. I mean, I came down for Brum's farewell. And, um, and, and as life has it, you know, Brum was a motorcycle publisher and journos, which meant that that whole place was full of people on you, including you. They let you in. It, they let me They let anybody. Gee, I tell you what. <laughs> If a bomb had gone off in that place the other day, there would have been no loss to motorcycling whatsoever. <laughs> there'd be no you one think? talking about it. There'd be, no, <laughs> there'd be no one left. Well, um, John, look, you are well known in the 4x4 world. I know that uh, uh, many people interested in, in 4x4s, camping, uh, certainly Australian travel, um, know you. Uh, you do a lot of video work, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Maybe a quick run through what you're up to at the moment. Um, not a lot. Mate, <laughs> not COVID not. was a really good thing to nail being a travel journo. Yes, know? yes. Um, and it, it, to be honest, it kind of didn't worry me. I've right. Been, I've been travelling probably the best part of 35 years, 40 yes. years. Actually, yeah. if you include the motorcycling, it's even longer and uh, for a living. And, yes. Um, whilst you can never see all of Australia, I've seen a fair bit of it. Yep. I love it dearly. I, I, yep. I, I never go through somewhere where I don't want to come back again. But... Um, this was a real good year just to stay at home and get yep. established and, and then get the get the old bikes out and get them running again. And You sort of had to use your own time a bit, didn't you? You, you did, you did. And I mean, you know, at first I went, oh, gee, you know, no income, this is going to be fun. Yes. And then I started to realise that um, life was just slowing down, which yes. led to things like this. I mean, instead of hopping on a bomber and flying down or something like that just to be here, mm. um, Next week's the Chumps Rally. Yes. So I thought, okay, take a couple of weeks, take the old bike, and, you know, taking a, a, a 1984 Harley on a... Yes, a, tell a, us you, you've 4, got... A 4,000 K trip is, is always a bit risky. There's a touch of madness days. about that. You've yeah. got... Now, tell us, you've got Ruby out there, which yep. is a much-loved old Harley. Yep. What's the bike and what's its history? Okay, well, uh, basically, I picked up Ruby 1985, uh, and that's the bike that built Live to Ride. At right. the time, right. At the time, I was uh, working with Bill McKinnon on two wheels, and yes. I was doing on the side uh, the Australian component of Aussie Easy Riders because, um, like a lot of motorcyclists, I got I got feet in lots of different camps. I've got, I've yes. got classic trials bikes. I I got my road bikes. I love my Harleys. You're a tragic. <laughs> that was a real tragic. <laughs> I got a shed full of tragedies. <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyway, in those days, you know, it was like five days a week. John Ruth from Two Wheels, the the full leathers and the the nice helmets, and off we go. You know, testing bikes, race reviews, yep. race tracks, all that kind of so stuff. John, oh, I should say, editing Two Wheels. Uh, what years was that? Oh, gee. Two Wheels well, Magazine, folks, if you're not aware. Yeah. One of the great, yeah, yeah, one of the great yeah. organs of Australian motorcycling. It was, well, do you know what? It's funny you say that, Snag, because it was those girls on the Nortons in the Two Wheels ads back in the <laughs> early 1970s. I do remember them. <clears throat> that just turned me on to Nortons. And, um, yeah. and in, to some <laughs> degree, that was our only, that and, that and the Green Horror. Yes, was our which only. is... Australian Motorcycle News for, for yeah. younger folk. <laughs> for younger folk. It used to come out in green paper like <laughs> exactly. a green newspaper. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah, became known as the Green Horror. That's the one. Well, that was it. If, if you lived in the bush like I did, um, you didn't have access to motorcycle knowledge. You couldn't go down to a bike shop or yes. anything like that. So two wheels and the Green Horror was about it. And, um, and years later, you know, to, to actually get to work for two wheels. Yeah. Which was just nepotism. I mean, Bill said, "Hey, what are you doing? I need someone to sit in that chair for three months." While However, it works, Johnny. Uh, we <clears throat> all got there strange ways. Yeah, we did. Eh? And uh, and and shortly after that, well, a year or so after that, I guess, um, Bill left. He went off to uh, to do other things, and they came into the office and said, "You, what's your name? You're the editor." You know, so <laughs> a bit like that. Uh, and by that stage, we'd started Live to Ride too. So it was, I was pretty busy there for a while. Oh, so you were doing uh, Live to Ride, which I, I uh, 
uh, quite disparagingly refer to as learn to read. Well, so, but, does, so everyone does else, mate. everybody and, else. And after you've subbed two and a half thousand <laughs> bloody stories written on chip packets <laughs> by, by blokes who, you know, are quite keen to go along to bike shows and see what's going on and take some photos. But yes. every show is, uh, you know, it was a wonderful day. I couldn't wait to get there. I got really drunk and I met some guy called Bearing or something like that. It was yes. always like that, you know. Yes, yes. And, um, I think it's probably still like that, thank goodness. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of words in it in the day, but I'll tell you what, at one stage there, Live to Ride was selling 47,000 copies. Well, and see, that's wheels, that's amazing. That's a real yeah. money spinner in Australia. That's oh, a big number. I got another twenty seven dollars a week for that. Yeah, eh? that's how publishing <laughs> works. <laughs> well, I always remember my publisher saying, "Why would you want to pay rise when you when you get to ride motorbikes all the time?" And it was a bit hard to argue about. Well, it was very hard to argue with. But <laughs> in my case, I sort of said, "Yeah, but hang on a minute. You know, like, this is a gold mine. Yes. I'm going to leave if you don't pay me more." Yes, and they did. Chancey moved, John. And then I wound up leaving. I think a couple well, of the blokes would have said, "Just go." In my case, well, yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of weird. See, that that was the great thing I had. It wasn't the the two wheel side of it because yes. there was a queue of blokes nine miles long that could to, do that to, yeah. to move in and and do two wheels. They were either professional editors who wanted to have a go at motorbikes, or they were motorcyclists who wanted to have a go at two wheels. And it was nearly always the motorcyclists that won in our game, yes. as you know. Yes. But there was a lot of them. And um, but the live to ride thing was different because no one knew how it operated. Right. No one had a clue. You know, they'd say, "How did you get these stories from Broadford from behind the stage?" And yes, you just go, "Oh, you know, it's just contacts." Yeah, yeah. And and maybe a baggie of this and a bottle of that. And I don't need it, to know? tell you too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. And and so they just they couldn't believe it. The the, the bean counters were going. Don't know what you're doing. Just keep doing. Just it. keep doing it. And yeah. it was like that for years. And then. Um, and Ruby, this is how it started. Oh, yeah, that's how we started yeah, talking, didn't we? Yeah. Well, Ruby was my 1984 Harley, still is. <clears throat> and the only way to build cred with the outlaw clubs was to show up on a motorcycle, on a Harley, yes. and do the yards with them. Yes. You know? Oh, they wouldn't have copped anything else. No, no, no. So I rode Ruby up to Darwin for the Blancs event. And I had to go everywhere at least two or three times to yes. all the big runs. To be sort of accepted. And well, I'd get me accepted, I'd get Live to Ride accepted, and then on the second, third, fourth trip, <clears throat> I'd get uh, our local contributor, if we'd found one by then. it was. Yes. If I found some guy with a halfway decent camera in the crowd, he had a fair chance. Of he, had the, he, he, he had the gig. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it was a bit like that. Yeah, so yeah. I rode all over the place. I went to, um, you know, oh, gee... Been doing in Western Australia three Strike, times. Yeah. And when you ride over, you get there on a motorcycle covered in oil, especially a chain drive, because old oh, Rubes is a kickstart chain drive. Oh, of course, it is too. Yeah, you get there, and, and the next thing, oh, mate, can I borrow some spanners? I need to do this. And so you kind of come into their world on a different, you're one of them. Yeah. And well, John, you, you were a serious motorcycle. It's like you say it like that, but. If you weren't a serious motorcyclist, you wouldn't have no hope with the with the uh, club guys, for starters. Oh, well, I mean, I'm that generation too, so, yes. so are you. But in my case, you know, age of 17, uh, screaming around a corner on a Norton, got it all wrong, fell off in the trees. Next thing, the nomads come around the corner. Now, they're all about 18 or 19. Yeah, they're not the old blokes <laughs> we know not, now. They're not the same old crew. Yes. And, uh, yep. and the, the leader in those days was Metho Tom, R.I.P. Tom. He came oh, around the corner, yeah, yeah, time, yeah, you would have met him. And, you know, he had a huge business in the end, selling Harleys out of Blacktown. Mm. But um, anyway. Told, told a good yarn, Tom. He told a good yarn. And, and he, there was a good reason he was called Metho Tom. But, <laughs> but you know, he was the backbone of one of the biggest outlaw clubs around. But in those days, he's just one of one of a bunch of guys from Lithgow going for a roar. Yep. Come around the corner, there's a Norton on its bum and some guy in the gutter. And so they, they helped me up. That was the first time I met him. And then over the years, you know, you just keep meeting people. Yes. Meeting people. Yep. It had some funny times. I mean, <clears throat> I used to combine the two jobs. Yes. And as you remember, in those days, Honda came out of uh, Melbourne. Yes. So if we wanted a test bike for two wheels in Sydney, I'd have to roar down to Melbourne. Or one of the guys would roar down. Yeah, to, to spend a day riding or something. Yeah, we'll pick it up and take it back or uh, right, a couple yep. of weeks or, or come down here and, and do the, the, the thing in Melbourne and... Um, and more than once, you know, like I'd uh, I'd go, well, look, I have to go because I've got to go to the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Heidelberg to <laughs> show them all the photos from Broadford. Yes. So, so that they're all right with it going in live to ride. So ah. you'd show up to the Hells Angels Clubhouse on a Friday night on their church night on a CBR 1000. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking about this the other day, Snag. And um, 
whilst it was important to build the cred with yes. this to ride, yes. the other thing you found with that old generation of bikers, and they're still the same, you know, you, you, you see an old outlaw, and he, unless he's in the gang for some stupid reason, I don't, yes. don't even have to name those stupid no, reasons. No, no, understood. A, there's a fair chance he's just a motorcyclist. Yes. And he's just like you. Yes. You know, especially if you guys have been knocking around... In in my world, and it's probably the same for you. If you ride a motorbike, you just you're just ninety percent in front of everybody else straight away, aren't you? you well, know, it's, it's a good like, start. A and good um, start. My, look, I, I've had nothing to do with patch clubs other than to nod and say hello. But I, all I know is I've only ever been treated as a gentleman. Yeah. It seems to me that people that get sort of a bit wound up about that stuff are uh, disappearing up their own dates. Oh, they, be be re- reasonable to them and they're reasonable to you so yeah especially now we're you know let's face it we're all we're all we're all old buggers you know uh, and and there's a bunch of rat bags there now especially uh, i'm not going to name nations or anything i don't think we should no but there are there are i don't want to get killed john no i'm not (laughs) i I forgot a bit left (laughs) well i don't mind chucking it on the line occasionally (laughs) i got got enough old mates mates who go yeah he's right well i reckon you've got more you've got a bit more cred in that world than i have johnny there's no doubt about that well you got a lot more cred in the going fast oh not anymore always the slowest road tester on earth mate not since i threw myself down the road a few years ago things have slowed down quite merrily and and more than happily so john i have to say more than happily so do you know that i think one of the proudest moments of my life mate was when you I rang you up and you told me how buggered up you were and then you started talking about bikes. And, <laughs> and you were you were barely breathing. Oh, no. You must have busted some ribs or oh, some other stuff. I broke the you pelvis were... three times, oh. eight broken ribs, punctured lung, internal bleeding. It wasn't a good sound. Well, I knew when they, when they were loading me into the thing to do some bloody thing to me, oh. uh, they'd landed a plane to put me on and Christ knows what, John. And uh, I said to the doctor, am I going to die? Because I need to know if that's the case. Yeah, you'd want to. And he <laughs> said... Uh, you're in the best place to deal with your problems, Greg. I thought, this prick's not even going to answer me. <laughs> so I, I thought, I'm not travelling too well. So after that, as you well know, yeah. when you've had an experience like that, every day's a frigging bonus. But what I do know, we don't bounce anymore. No, mate. No, no, We no, do no, not no, bounce. No, I, I totally agree. It's, um, I've, I've planned my retirement, which I'm not due for for a long time, but I'll be <laughs> motorcycling still but i'll be doing classic trials <laughs> well you know, you, twin why, shock trials I've why been, wouldn't you <laughs> you can keep going you can be 95 and still yes around the paddock. you could do it on half an acre yeah and if you fall off it'll be slow when well, you can go straight back to your house <laughs> something like that so anyway but we've, we're jumping around <laughs> which is great i know we'll we'll have to um temper ourselves because we could talk for hours john yeah um uh, Ruby. So Ruby is still your go-to. It's yep. still your, your well-loved Harley. What else yep. have you got in the shed? Oh, well, quick run through on Does Ruby. your missus know about them all, first of all? No. Right. <laughs> but she doesn't care. Right, okay. I have the world's best missus. I'm not saying that just because nope. on the off chance she might listen to this. I, well, I think she's obviously very patient. <laughs> oh, she's very patient. I'm one of those guys who's never going to get married. I was 37 before I even met Karen. Before they trapped you. Before she trapped me. She got me. Jesus. And uh, yeah, but no, she doesn't care what I do. In fact, the last thing she said to me as far as instructions on the shed and the collection and all the other stuff was, was look, can you just get doors so I don't have to look at it all? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I put some roller doors in. But Bless um, her. <laughs> she's good. What's her first name? Karen. So Karen. Karen yeah. Okay. And you've been married, what, 200 years? No. Uh, hang on. How old well, are you? Well, you were 37. Yeah. Oh, well, that actually that might that tw- might date you if we did that. Tw- Twenty-seven years of you. You get less for murder. You've oh, got to say that, don't you? You do. I've only been there half of that though. You know, I go away <laughs> a lot. I mean, and and just a quick word on that. You know, it's funny because she's she's the daughter of a ship's engineer. Right. Three girls. Dad was a ship's engineer. They go away six weeks. They're home six weeks. Yes. So her whole life with me has consisted of. Gee, I'm glad you're home and a wonderful warm welcome, followed by your bags are packed when you're leaving, you know? So, so she's come up in that environment. In fact, I can remember <laughs> yeah. a girl, she used to, a friend of mine, um, and a, a lovely friend of mine, who only used to date sailors. And oh, I, said, yeah. I said, why are sailors? She said, because they go away. <laughs> so there's a bit of that. No, in no. a strong marriage, there's some travel. I have noticed that. I mean, you know, this trip, when I brought up the idea of two or three weeks away on Ruby instead of... Um, a quick flight and then maybe a zap down to 
Dow Getty. Yes. And I said, oh, I could be away three weeks. And Karen went, well, you can spend longer if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, love, yeah. I think. Oh, no, she's, she's good value. <laughs> we look after each other. That's what it's all about. But, of course. You know. Um, back to the shed. Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Back to Ruby. Yeah, 750,000 Ks. Shite. But, and I just, I just went through this again, you know, because I was riding around Torquay. I had a little bit of time before we started yep. here. I was looking for some oil. Right. And and just look on can, the road, mate. Mate, <laughs> you can find any form of surfwear down here near Bell's. You can. You you can see any number of trendy people, and there's a million cafes. It's a beautiful place, but no oil. Garages, super cheaps, any auto, but nothing. Then I found, I rode round uh, just behind Bunnings. I saw a big Penrite sign on a workshop. Right. Car yeah, yeah. workshop. Right. I yeah. thought right. They got Good start. Penrite, that's where I'm going. So in I go. And I got swarmed. The boss came out. Two mechanics came over. Oh, beauty! You know, like we're into bikes. Because the too. old girl. There was bikes everywhere. They were in, they were all personally. Perfect. And you know how that bike network sticks together, eh? Yes. So they let me sort out my girl. And um, uh, what was the, what's the issue? Oh well, it was just low on fluids, mate. The the primary I run automatic transmission fluid in the yes. primary. Yes. Yes. And um, it it needed about half a litre, and right. the motor had gone through about oh nearly. Nearly a litre and a half. So you've yeah, been on the road for a while, haven't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. done a couple of thousand k's. Come down from Brizzy to Melbourne and, yeah, and running all around. around. Yeah, running around. And, but before anyone goes, gee, 750,000, how'd you get that out of a Harley? The frame's been rebuilt. Grandfather's it's axe. It's on 40 thou overboard, which yes. is the last on an Evo. Oh, geez, there's not much left there, no, is there? No, no. She's had five crank pins because one of them was a dud and... Oh, it's had it's it. still, it's a great number though, no it's matter what you've boy. done. 750,000 Ks in anything. Um, it's a lovely old boy. And uh, it's obviously endeared itself to your heart. Well, you know, after all these years, I've got it pretty much the way I want it. <laughs> <laughs> just got it right. <laughs> I just got it right, finally, you know. Yeah, no, she's lovely. So um, what else were we going to say? What else is in the shed there, mate? Uh, well, there's another 84 Harley. Um, yes. And there was, because it was important to be seen as the guy riding the same old bike, the kickstart Harley with the chain. Yes. Uh, yes. When my brother sold his, we, we bought him about the same time. When he sold his, he sold it to me. Right. And so for years, I'd just um, swap the number plates and the paint jobs. And so I could always keep one of them going, you know. And um, so <laughs> We can it, say that now, can't we? We can say that Statute now. Statute of limitations. Naturally, like, yeah, yeah. This all if you're going to come and get us yeah, on that, you, you need to do yeah, something too else. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. But... Um, uh, so there's another 84. I've got a Road King. It's an Evo too. I like Evolutions. Right. I like Evolutions too. Yeah. They're, um, what year is that? That's a 93. So 93 that's very Road early. Uh, yeah. Fairly in the, early Evo. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my personal belief on Evos is they didn't get any better. They were just really good from the start. They if were. Anything, they got a little sort of um, a little bit more mass produced, a, a few different changes. Um I, I, I've ridden lots of the newer Harleys. I've, you know, the twin cams I've pulled to bits and also a lot of complication for yeah. a little bit of smoothness that's not necessary. In my mind. A bit, o- bit of over-engineering, you reckon? Well, I'm a bush mechanic and I yeah. like things as simple as they come. So Ruby's got points and a coil. Yep. Um, and, I mean, that's a straight swap for an old one. You can't do it for the later ones because they're all... Uh, the ignition's timed off little sensors and things. Ah, uh, of course. A, yep. An old girl like that, you just whip out the CDI, bung the points plate in from a shovel, yep. and yep. off you go. And they run Rambler points, GD501 from Jeez. Bosch. So there's something to know. Now, that is a tip, <laughs> a Ruthie <laughs> tip. And I'll tell you what, if you want some tips, if you've got a Harley, <laughs> not so much the newer ones, you know, I'm talking the last 20 years, Yes. but the older ones, you need something, you go to the bearing shop. You don't go to the Harley Ah. In in the first instance, if it's unless it's right? something specific, if it's a bearing, like cam bearings, for yes. an example, they save about twenty cents in the manufacture. But cam bearing doesn't take a lot of stress; it's not doing a lot, and they use a slightly cheaper bearing that's got um, caged rollers. Yes, and you can buy a fully rolled bearing at a bearing shop that fits in. It's exactly the same in every way, except that it's about two hundred percent better. Right. And and I've found probably that probably a bit cheaper too, and it's a whole lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've found that with almost everything. The, um, it's as if they built Harley's out of hardware stores. Yes. Know. Well, with with your travels, um, that's quite true. It's something you just uh, saying that's just made me think about it. Um, 
you do get to some pretty remote places. Yes. And you like to get off the beaten track yeah. and you're fairly serious but, uh, with your motorcycling and your four, mm. certainly your four by four. I've followed Milo closely and Milo too, and uh, along with a lot of other people. But it's quite true that it doesn't matter if you're Ruthie or you're bloody Brad Pitt, when things break and you're out in the bush, yeah. you've got to be able to fix it. Well, that's it. And, and that was my whole ethos with Milo, which was something I learnt from Ruby, really. Right. I mean, I was an opal miner. Yes, I know that. We're going to get to that. Oh, are we? <laughs> yeah, there's going to be good stuff about that. Well, when you do that, you build all your own gear. You've got to repair it yourself. And, and I've been doing that stuff since I was a kid. I love it. Yeah. So I, I did the same with Milo. Milo runs, um, or it still Just runs. For, sorry to interrupt. What is Milo? Oh, Milo is a 1967, 72, 83 Toyota, which right. I built myself. Built himself. Shortened a little four-cylinder turbo diesel motor from a dump truck, a Toyota dump truck. Um Right. And the whole thing was built. It's so simple. It's mechanical injection so that I can switch off the electricity. I yes. don't need electricity. I've, I've, I've come from Tasmania to Queensland with an ever-ready torch and some red tape swinging in the back window <laughs> and one driving light running off a battery, you know? <laughs> so you wish you should have, did you film that? <laughs> no, they never, they never filmed the dangerous That's things. the goal. <laughs> I know. I That's know, the I know. goal. They filmed plenty of repairs. There was the time I... Um, you rolled one, didn't you? Oh, something? yeah, I've rolled on my old <laughs> model a couple of times, rolled the yellow one once. and Just a detail, folks, yeah. just rolled it. Oh, but they, they fall over so slow. And, and as you know, Snag, if you ride a motorbike, you know, when a car goes all haywire, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a joke. I'm yeah. surrounded by this tin walls. Funny. This is funny. I've yeah. got a, you know, I've got a seatbelt on. I'm not even going to fly over the handlebars. It stops being funny on a motorbike. No, when, it, when your a motorbike is a lot closer to the ground. And and, and I guess I, I got that thing in my head that um, I... I always feel safe in a vehicle compared to... A, I, I love my motorbikes, don't get me wrong. No, understood. But in terms of the thing falling over, yes. who cares Yes. if it's a car? Unless, yes. Unless, I know people get really unlucky, but they're going too fast. You don't go too fast in an old Toyota. Well, you're not going too fast on some of those tracks you're on, I know that. No, no um, that's for sure, yeah. But like, so you, with your mechanical knowledge, and I know you, you've got good mechanical knowledge, and I think touching on the fact that you love doing it, that's why you probably get good at it. But were you self-taught? Pretty much? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I had that lucky break that um, my old man couldn't hammer a nail into a wall. Right. You know, yep. so when I was a you kid... You reckon that's lucky? Well, I think it's... Well, I know it works different for other guys. Yeah. <clears throat> but in my case, it was like, um, it just fascinated me. Yes. You know, I just wanted to do it and I got every chance. You know, yes. I can remember as a kid, um, I would have been about 10 and uh, the old man wanted to save some money on a falcon that needed a a valve grind, and I just put my hand up and said, I can do that, no worries. Yep. And off we go down to the shop and for, I don't know, a tenth of what it would have cost him to pay a mechanic do to it do it. Do it yourself. Uh, he bought some basic tools. I went home and did it myself. And, and and that's kind of where it started. I was very lucky I had an uncle called Reeves who was a rocker in England, you know, one of those ace cafe Oh, guys. yeah. Well, the real <coughs> deal. Like. The real deal. And he came to Australia because he was a bit too much of a real oh, deal. Oh, right. Too real. Yes. He ran away with Auntie Mary and over they came. Well, he was a farm mechanic over here, bulldozer mechanic, uh, ne never trained. Never Still trained. Still had a shed full of mm. bikes. No, but some people don't have to. They, yep. They're just good at it. And then yep. They get to the thing they can't do. And they either learn about it or they go and find someone who can Maybe do someone it. Someone can do it. Yeah. I'm still at that stage. You know, there's some things you, you just can't do. But in Reeves's case, he gave me a, um, he saw I was interested in bikes. I mean, I, from the day, I don't know about you, I can still remember pinning uh, Lawrence of Arabia on a Brow Superior poster on the back of my door in the Flinders Ranges at about eight years old and yeah, going, yeah. I want to be like him. I want to be that guy. <laughs> I want to be that guy. Yeah, know? yeah. Hence the love of the It wasn't like the, the other kids at school weren't talking like that, were they? No, no, they weren't. Not no, many. No, no. What's well, wrong with this bloke? Especially my school. It was on a radio. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah, pedal radio, yeah. Where at? In uh, a place called uh, Mount Searle in the Flinders Ranges. Right, so you were a real bushy as a kid. As a kid. And, um, yeah. Now, you didn't even get far on asking me the other bikes in the shed. No, I'd well, like I... would to say you, that. Well, I, I don't just, want people I just thinking let, I'm just Harleys and nothing else. Well, like I said to... I said, how will I go doing, because uh, Ruthie and I are mates, so it, yeah. it's not yeah. hard, but 
I said, how will I go do on Ruthie? And I thought, as a mate of mine said, just, just, just let him go. Just <laughs> set him free. Yeah. <laughs> set him free. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm more than happy to hear everything you've got. But um, what else have you got? In this okay. Yet? Well, my latest acquisition, I'm really proud of. Yes. Um, a, a couple of my mates just gave me a GSX-R750, the oh, 1985 one. I was telling you about it the other That's night. That's a but G, we, isn't it? It's the GSX-R. Yeah, the, I don't it's know the G it's model. Called. I think it's 85 the is the first one. one. It's the absolute first one. It's It's got the split seat and the ducktail. Yes, and, and, uh, that, sort of, and, and uh, that funny sort of protective guard on the exhaust. I think it has. Yeah, that, think well, that's, right. that's the you first one. It? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was also the first... Uh, fast Japanese bike I've ever ridden. Yes, in, they were. In my two and days. light. Oh, light. And they still are, to some degree, an excellent bike. So so this thing, the brothers had it, Porker and Butcher, g'day lads, the Baton boys, they had <laughs> they, Make sure you're watching <coughs> oh, and they, share. They, they will be. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, well, they, they had this bike between them. They shared it for years and years, and it had about 70,000 Ks on they both had other bikes. They weren't riding the GSX-R. They let it lapse. It sat in the shed. Eventually, what are we going to do? Let's give it to John. So that's the latest one to come into the shed. Needs a lot of work. Yep. Um, I've got my first matchless. The What's first, that? It's a 1950 500cc uh, G500? G80. G80, that's right. Which is yep. just your, your basic matchless, you know, um, pedestrian model single cylinder. I had it when I was 15. I paid 150 bucks for it. I got my license on you it. You got your money's worth, I reckon. Well, no, no, not quite. Because see, <laughs> you got to hear the rest of the story, Snake. <laughs> Three years later, I sold it for 150 bucks, so oh, I'd have enough money to buy square. a second-hand Honda Four. I bought it back about four years ago for seven and a half grand, <laughs> and it hasn't got any better. It's oh, still the same. The economies <laughs> of that aren't great. Oh yeah, no. but look, a matchless. I've always had a thing for matchless, but I don't know much enough about them. Mm. Um, pretty pretty simple single Just cylinder five hundred and it, it taught me a lot about mechanics. Um, you know, it had a magneto. It taught me about simplicity. The fact that uh, you have one function for one thing and it does its job. Yes. So the carburetor doesn't have an air filter or any of that stuff. You know, like yep. it'll sit there and doof 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 doof, and you'll watch a big locust or something land oh, on the bell Christ. mouth, and you'll hear it go doof doof. <laughs> Just process the locust. Doof and throw the, throw the locust out what the back. What it doesn't need yeah. out the back. Yeah, yeah. But um, You don't want that to be a rock, though, do you, John? Well, not really, but that's probably why they stick the carby at the back of the head instead of the front. Well, they thought about it then. Ago. I think yeah. they thought about it somewhere down the line. <laughs> but I, I just I, I finished a, a Compi Matchless, which is the Scrambler right. model. Excuse my non-knowledge. Oh, that's another 500cc, but it's an aluminium engine, single. Right. And if you ever, you know, it's got the high pipe if... If if I uh, rode it to a rocker cafe, the boys would just queue up to go gaga because it's right. lovely. It's yeah. Um, do you get out on that to go and do a spin on no, that every now and then? Or yeah, yeah. Every just now roll and then. it round. It's, it, it's one of those things you've got to be in the mood for it. Yes, you know? understood. And, and um, I think that's most of the case with most British stuff. I think it is, mate. It is. I've got a couple of Nortons talking British. I, I've You've got, got a, the sickness as well. Oh, a bad sickness. <laughs> well, I know about your sickness. I've, oh, seen, I've seen the results. <laughs> I was living in the bloody, I was living in the street, keeping my Norton going. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm lucky. I, I, um, I bought a 750 Mark III yes. interstate because yes. when I was a lad, I had a 72 and an interstate and yes. I always wanted the Mark III. Yes, that um, was an electric start, the Mark electric III, wasn't start, it? The last yep. of them, you know, so I bought one and... Typical for me, the electric start never worked. No, all it did was put about 10 kilos <laughs> on the bloody thing. <laughs> That's it, yeah. That was it. Yeah. I got, she went round twice and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then I pulled it to bits because, you know, like Norton's, the motor went lunch one yeah. day. Just totally went to Standard. lunch. And uh, it just ate itself as they do. So into it, I, I was just... I had it all pulled down and a mate of mine rang me up and he said, listen... I know where there's a 72 Norton with 20,000 miles on it. And I said, oh, yeah. And is it next to a couple of crates of WLAs left over from the war, you know? And he said, no, 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 this is genuine, John. It's underneath this bloke's house in Ipswich. Yeah. He doesn't want to sell it. So I go out there. He doesn't want to sell it. He doesn't want to sell it. He's just pointing you at it anyway. Yeah. So I go out, as you do. Right, as you do. I go out there, knock on the door. His wife answers the door. I said, look, um, I've been told about a bike. She said, do you want to buy it? I said, well, do you own it? And she said, no, but I think he wants to sell it. Don't you, Peter? Right. <laughs> the kitchen senate. <laughs> and yeah, Peter, yeah. Peter came out and he could barely walk. 
And um, he wasn't a well man. He had it since new. Strike. And yeah, he was okay. a lovely bloke. Yep. Do you know it's still got the original rego on it? Because he kept it fully registered, even though kept he wasn't the, writing it. Is that right? Yeah. Under the house. It was his dream. It was that's the like, way of him still living it. Exactly. That was every year paying the rego was a bit like saying, I'm still young. I'm still going to get still on got the a bike, motorbike. Still go for a raw grouse. So, and, so you obviously thought, well, he's, this bloke's ripe for the pickings. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound really bad. I know it does. I, but... I would like to think that Peter thought this is the guy who this should is the have right my man. Bike. <laughs> I always, I used to say to people when when I was buying a bike, maybe a little cheaper than they should have. I used to say, I'm alleviating you of a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> you alleviated him of the problem. You're admitting that. So a... <laughs> he didn't have a problem, mate. I'm that old now. I had a problem matter. when I got home and said to Karen, um, I I've, think I've just spent I've a lot got a of new money on a new bike. But um, but that bike, unbelievable. I ride it most weeks. Um, it's the old, I, I, as much as anything, I'm riding it because it's a right-hand gear change. It keeps me in swing with the matchless. You know? Ah, yeah, yeah. So and upside down uh, Upside pattern. down, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you go up and down. And, and it's a lovely feeling too, I've got to tell you. Yeah, when you, I get when that. When you punch down a gear yeah. and roar forward even faster. It feels racy. It feels racy. Yeah, yeah, really no, does. I get that. And it, I, I, what I used to find though when I'd get on a bike with the upside down change Everything's fine until you get a panic situation. And then you hit the brakes. And I, yeah, I would go into Japanese mode mm. and just make the whole thing worse. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. need to ride them. And yeah, you do. And it's fun. And I love it. I mean, riding, a you forget, you know, I can remember, and you probably can too, but when a Honda 4 was a really big bike. Oh, cross And a yeah. Norton and a, or a Triumph 750, that was about as big as they got. Yes. You know? And... Um, and you put them up next to. I hop on the Norton now. It feels like it's a two hundred and fifty Honda compared to some of the yes. things out there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. The other day, I helped a bloke chuck a victory on a trailer, a big, yeah, fully oh, panniered touring victory thing. Beautiful bike, eighteen hundred, seventeen hundred cc's, whatever. Man, it filled the trailer. Yeah, I had to cut a hole in the front they of the bike trailer to take the front wheel. Massive. Massive. But, but I guess the electric live is always a big bike too, and uh, ultra, I should say, and. Um, yeah, but maybe yeah. I mean I remember the first time I saw an ultra. I thought, you know, where does it end? But yeah, now compared, it, ultra looks a little bit yes. like a a mid sized bike. It does a little bit. Christ doesn't it? Hey, I pranged the first ultra glide in Australia. Tell us about that. Oh, do you want to hear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th- we want to hear, don't so, we? I was, oh, okay. So I'm testing bikes for two wheels, and um, Warren Fraser. Yes. Fraser's motorcycle. I bought an ultra glide classic into the country, John. This is 1988, and I went, oh, okay, cool. That would have been a bit of a thing too then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as it worked out, it was, because it had the, it was the first bike I knew of in the country that from standard had a stereo system. That's right, cassette player. A cigarette lighter, cassette player. That's right, yeah. It had the works, you know. Yeah. And uh, that big front fairing. Yeah, and I can't remember. It might have even had cruise control. I can't remember. Strike. Pretty rare in those days. But but, uh, he said, oh, you know, do you want to buy? I said, look. You know, you can take it up to Gosford and back, he said. I said, listen, it'll have to do the full three-week, two-wheels test period or it's not worth worrying about, you know? Right, yep. Mostly because I had to go to Broadford. And I also had to go but over No, that's to fair. South I've, Australia. I still say, two, you need two weeks to <laughs> well, get to know them. Yeah, of course. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I got to know it. So <laughs> it was the best thing on earth. Rode it down to Broadford, did my job there taking photos. Then I went over to South Australia. At that stage, that uh, I tested... They were bringing in Enfield bullets for the first time in years back right. then. Yep. Those were Still the British made back then? No, no, they were the Indian oh, ones. Oh, Indian ones, okay. Yeah, I know that because they had the holy cow dung brake pads in them. Oh. You know, like <laughs> you'd ring your bells and bless something and you had a chance of scooting to a hole. Oh, that's them. right. Nothing we, like the Enfields of today. That's hey. right. India had bought the tooling and, and, <laughs> that's right. and all that. So, and yeah. it was it still had all the slack tolerances in oh, it. Oh, yeah, and, and the mud guards were still hand-painted underneath. You that's know, right, red yeah. Lead. But, so anyway, so I go over to Adelaide and I visit some friends and uh, all the rest of it. Had a, and then on the way home, I'm tired. I've been riding through the night because I'm running really late. And, and I had a girlfriend in Sydney I wanted to visit before the sun came up. Visit. Three o'clock in the visit. morning. Yeah, you, you know. When we Press on. Come on. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm coming into Sydney. I hit a little oil patch. Right. And the bike just did a big fall over on the side and slid. And I was sliding after it. And, you know, even in those days, even riding a Harley, I always wore a lot of leather. 
right. as much as I could. And yep. in, in that instance, it was leather pants, leather boots, and a chain on my wallet that took all the brunt of the slide. And I slid behind the bike and I watched the beautiful um, stereo fairing <laughs> sort of getting ground away and the oh. crash bars getting ground, the gear stick kind of. And I thought, oh, geez, at least all the damage is on one side. And that's when it hit the gutter, flipped up and went bang on the other side. Did the other side. Smacked it terribly. But it's a Harley. So get it up. You know. So you're all right. You oh, just, yeah, your ego's right. not great. but you know, It's a lot easier when you're young. It is and true. I've only slid down the road. So I get up and a taxi driver stopped and I borrowed his wheel brace and straightened out the gear shift enough to ride it again. And, and I got to her place and then the next day I rode into two wheels pretty late, you know, and um, I thought, uh, oh, geez, I'm going to have to take this bike. You've got to talk you to know. Fraser. I've got to talk to Fraser. So, so I chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cab voucher and I got a, and I got a taxi just outside of work and got him to follow me out to Fraser's where I left the bike on the side stand. Jumped back in the, the cab. Taxi and roared off, you know. <laughs> you and, softy. And by, yeah, oh, yeah. By the time I got back to the office, my uh, secretary, Nina, said, oh, Warren Fraser's been on the phone three times mm, and no. he's not very happy. The bike's not quite... <laughs> It hasn't been returned as we delivered well, it. But you know what they did. I mean, it's it always it, those guys never lose money on bikes. Mate, they've got a con, two contact patches. Yeah. They will fall over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, you just don't want a reputation for it. Funny thing, though, I lost the cigarette lighter in South Australia. Oh, no. Now, there is a connection. You would have been smoking back then, there too. There is a connection. I was smoking, yes, and, and you, South Australia had liberal smoking laws. We won't yes. talk about that. Yes. <laughs> no need to get too far into that. Yeah, so I'm trying out the efficiency of the fairing, and can you actually smoke behind the fairing at speed, and I lost the cigarette lighter. <laughs> you know, when the bike fell on its side, guess what fell out? The, the cigarette, cigarette lighter. lighter. Oh, you found that again? <laughs> yeah, I found it again. You should have said that to Fraser. Well, at least I found the bloody cigarette lighter. <laughs> well, I did. Jesus Christ. It took, took years for him to get over there. Well, not really. Well. He had Ducatis and Harleys, and he was punching hard. The Evos, uh, he needed two wheels. Yes. Fortunately. Well. Because he didn't like me. I mean, but those days were, like, it was a lo- bit of a love-hate thing. I yeah. spent a lot of time on AMCN when in a, it was in its glory yeah. patch, which was lasts a long time. Yes. Um. Having worked in the in the bike journalism game just about all most of my adult life, um, mm. but back then you could have a spirited argument with a distributor based around the fact that it was a mutual situation. In that, of course, those advertising dollars is what bloody you know kept yeah. the thing running. There's yeah. no two ways. But at the same time, when you were selling forty seven thousand copies, they knew damn well they needed to they have needed Ruthie us. A on site and B telling the yep. truth. Yep. So that oh, I true. found that led to a lot of spirited conversations oh yeah well i can remember i mean you know there's millions of examples and you probably remember them too but suzuki was distributing out of sydney in those days yes yes and they came out with this thing called the gsxf or es or something and it was basically a 1100 cc tourer and it, its gimmick was an electric front windscreen that went up and down oh, do you right. remember yep. that I so actually sports, don't. Okay. I should, but no, I'm be honest, I don't. You know why you don't? Because it didn't last very long because we <laughs> tested it. Thanks, John. You let me off there. No, 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 it's true. It had a front end wobble. And, right. and Dave Big, Bourne... Uh, well, built on by that aerodynamic uh, setup. Something to do with that. Or it was just the geometry was wrong. It was a basic problem with the bike, you know. Yes, yeah. And, and it had hit about 70 mile an hour, you know, 110 kilometres an hour. <clears throat> and the thing would start to do a little wobble, which would get worse. Okay. And you'd have to ride through it. It was like a Norton with loose ice elastics. And, and it, but it was dangerous because of the power of the thing. And so Dave Bourne took it out and he came back. It's dangerous. He was our chief road tester then. I took it for a spin, got the same thing out of it. I said to Suzuki, look, you know, this thing's not good. This is what it does. Um, no, that's you not... You reckon they'd know that, though, wouldn't they? They didn't want to admit it. All right, yeah. They, uh, I'm sure they did. They'd have to know, they wouldn't they? They didn't want to admit it. Yeah. And so I said, look, if you don't get it off the market, we're going to publish. We published because yep. they didn't take it off the market. They took it off the market. Right. And But it caused a, a rift. There was about 18 months where they didn't advertise with us. Mm. And then the next thing, I get an invitation to go and have lunch somewhere. All of, no, yeah, we better have a chat. Yeah. I can remember having a couple of conversations <clears throat> when I was with Trader. Um, generally, our relationship was good with the Trader. Mm. Uh, it really was. Um, and most of the time, if there was an error, what I used to do, I'd get a bike. If there was a problem, I would contact the distributor like you've done, like yeah. you did. Yeah. The bike is doing this. 
Yeah. Is it representative? What your view is it representative? Or give me another unit. Give them another chance because it could have been that unit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, generally, I found that people would go, yep, we've got an issue. Of course. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't know. We've never really had this discussion, but I kind of assume that you'd be the same as me. I, I get a lot of, even in the four-wheel drive world, I used to get a lot of, how come you think everything's good? Well, there's a reason for that. And that is because in my game, your game, and I learned it in bike journalism, where the world's a little bit of tighter place. There's not a heap yep. of money. No. We're, the trade and the journos are in it for the same reason, which is they love it. Motorbikes. You know, they go and sell cars. If you, no one gets money. rich in this no game. No one gets rich in it. No. You love motorbikes and you want to promote motorcycling. Yes. So. It comes from a good place. Yeah, it comes from a good place. And the rule on anything, didn't matter whether it was a set of gloves or a helmet or whatever, if it came into the office and we didn't like it, we'd ring up the distributor yes. and we'd say, we don't like this. Yes. And if they said, no, no, we want it tested, then we'd say, well, we'll test it, but we're going to tell everyone we don't like it. Would you rather have it back? And so... They get an opportunity. They get the opportunity, you know, like, just mm. take it off the market. There's I no need to be horrible about it. No, no, no. Look, we, we, at Motorcycle Accessory Supermarket, years ago, yes. bought in their own helmet. Still you know? going. Sedo was working with me then, so this is back in the... Early nineties, the great Seto, the, the great, great Jeff man Seto. Yes, yep. so oh. we'll see him on the weekend too. Oh, no, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I'll see yeah, Seto. No, he'll be there, man. I hope he will. Um, anyway, probably the one of the most brilliant wordsmiths in motorcycling. But Jeff's very unassuming, and he he wants a new helmet. MCS have sent him one of their new helmets. You know, wear this in when you're testing bikes. He put it on. He said, "John, it's got no peripheral vision." Uh, I said, yeah. oh, fair income, you know. Yeah. And, and, too tight and, up yeah, here. Too tight. Yeah. It had too much padding and you literally, you clipped a couple of percent Ooh, off the peripheral. Yeah, which is where a car can sit. Yeah, exactly. He said, I don't want to wear it. Yeah. And I said, okay, fair enough. So we ring up the boss out there. I won't mention his name. And, um, oh, it led to a, because he'd obviously invested in a container full of these oh, things. Oh, yeah. They uh, don't want to hear that. No. Jeez, just well, led, you wouldn't want to, would no, you? No. It led to a shit fight. Uh, they still sold the helmet. Um, but they didn't bother bringing any more in when right. it was gone. And we didn't test it. And yep. it's it's the same. I, I've always been of that view, you know. Like, I learned that very early in the game. Um, I tested a Virago 750. Yep. Two yep. wheels. Still working for Billet. In, yep. I was assistant editor. And Jeez, I, I bet you didn't ride that to Broadford. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I bet you didn't take that to Broadford. <laughs> it would have be been right, on a fire. You might be right. I'll tell you what. <laughs> but, you know, I'll give anything a go. And I took this thing for yeah, a while. Yeah, why not? I didn't like it, you know. It wasn't it you. It felt soft. I looked down, I saw gold-plated plastic. and Very no garish, front, weren't they? Yeah, no front frame member. And it was just like, well, oh, I don't know. So, so I bagged the hell out of it. In the funniest <laughs> test I think I've ever written. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I, I learned a very important lesson then because the next... We used to have to do bike shows, trade shows and stuff. Yes, you know? yeah. We did a few of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah we they, we just got day, pissed at night and nursed a headache the next day, was, I remember. It, yeah, or had the fridge behind the stand. That's if, right. if you're with John War on two wheels, you always had your own fridge somewhere. That's right. So, um, <laughs> so you know, next time there's a Sydney show, I, I look over and all of a sudden there's 14 guys in front of me with Yamaha Virago Owners Club. Oh, written on their vest. It's not going to go well. Well, you know what you're dealing with for starters if I've got that, but yeah, press on. <laughs> but anyway, that was when I realised that as terrible as I thought that bike was, I thought that bike was terrible. Yep. There's at least 14 people who loved it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's they did. A, they loved the Yeah, things. and you, you're kind of breaking their heart. And you're kind of breaking their heart. So from that day on, if I didn't like something, I wrote 4,500 words about the colour and how beautiful it was. Yeah, yeah. Or something. Yep. And, and read between the lines, you know? Doesn't well, go around corners, doesn't stop, goes like a well, wet Well, that's not really... But it's a beautiful colour. Not reading between the lines, though, is it? <laughs> but, oh, look, I take your point because I often... And now, you would be, I'm sure, certainly, more, even much more than I do, but in the 4 by 4 world, I'm sure, people will ring me up and go, now, I want to buy... I've got three bikes in mind or whatever. Yes. And, and often they're very disparate. Yeah. They're totally... Yes. You go well, well, on a GS, a Road King or a... Yeah. And you go, geez... Well, where are you? Anyway. Where's your head? <laughs> what I've found out that what, over, unless they're asking very seriously, they have decided which bike they want. Yes. And they yes. want to hear that you like it too. That's right. So you drop a few hints. It's the same with the four-wheel drives. It's, um, 
you know, I get both, obviously, but you get some guy go, well, what do you reckon? Should I get a Hilux or, or a Navara? And you say, what do you, what, what, what was your last? What are you vehicle? learning and, and to? And they go, or, oh, yeah. Toyota or 80 series. You go, well, you probably want the Hilux then, because they're a Toyota guy, and they will quite happily pay twenty grand more to drive a Toyota. Yeah, you know, which and, is the case with Hiluxes too. They, I know, definitely and, more expensive than the competition. Aren't we they? don't want to talk about cars. I don't really want to, but <laughs> but I'll tell you, my my philosophy on cars, um, is that Toyota was the best without yes. a doubt. Yes. They were there. The 80 series Toyota is probably the toughest, most comfortable, best all-round RV off-road vehicle ever. 100 series was a bit softer. 200 series is softer again. Really expensive on parts. The 300 series, when it comes out, would be a piece of rubbish. And, <laughs> you and got it here first. The right. Hiluxes, seriously, you know, they spend more money on advertising than they do on building a strong car, which is made in Thailand anyway. And they're kind of going like that. Yeah. In, the, I got a Mahindra from India that cost twenty. I saw you with that. Less. Now, can I just say when I first saw, I want I want to set this up because yeah. when I first saw you with that, I thought <laughs> this could go one of two ways. Over to you. <laughs> All right. Well, I thought so too. Yeah. I mean, but they must have known this is chancy. Oh, they did. They did. But the guys at Mahindra couldn't believe that I was ringing them up saying, "Can I borrow one of your vehicles?" Yeah. They said, "Why?" And I said, "Because I got a feeling that." This vehicle, with its full chassis and its leaf springs and its locking rear diff from standard, an Eaton locker, and I, I said, you know, you're building a really... that The motor is a, a, out of a, a tractor. You know, right. it's got double chain drive cams, so it's completely... It's not going to bust. It's not going to bust. They get half a million Ks out of these things. Yeah. Well, I guess they have to in and rural gee, parts of... Uh, well, rural India. Rural India, yeah. for Christ's sake. And, and in rural India... You know, they shove eight cows and all their wives and a couple yep. of buses in the back, you know. <laughs> and so I thought, right, I want to... They've only just seriously started to import them the last few years. Right. Before that, it was just the odd car dealer bringing in a few, you know. But so I... Um, and Mahindra is the world's biggest tractor selling company. I thought, there's, there's something going on here. Yes. How come they're 25 grand cheaper than a Hilux? So, so I borrowed one to test it. And it's just like the old bike things. Do you know what? So much money is spent on marketing in the four-wheel drive game right? that the prices are set according to perception rather than vehicle. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So in my mind, the Mahindra is probably, apart from the fact that it's as ugly as a dead goldfish, it's probably <laughs> the, the, the most impressively strong vehicle in that dual cab tray back single. Is that right? Four-wheel drive. This is after doing only 8,000 Ks. Uh, were you thumping it through bush. the bush or? Yeah, oh, beat, beating it snotless. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, no. No, I've had I've had the thing on two wheels. Fair income. <laughs> Stuck in all sorts of weird places. And um, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're from Mahindra and you're listening to this, I only drive it on Sundays to get a coffee. <laughs> but well, mate, they don't the... mind either because I feed back to them. Well, it's good feedback yeah. without wanking on. Having John Ruth saying this is a good, strong truck. Yeah. That's a big vote of confidence for them. Well, you know, there's a big part of me, and, and you're the same, I know, because that's why we're mates. It, it was never really about the money anywhere. No, no. It was always about... I haven't got any, John. <laughs> it couldn't have been about yeah. the money. I don't know. I spent all mine on bikes and cars <laughs> and four-wheel drives. And squander the rest. <laughs> and squander the rest. <laughs> Wine, women and song, as my expense account used to say. Yeah, didn't they love that? But... um. Yeah, so it's you reach a stage in your life where you just you want to put back, and in my case, nice you know, to hear, John. The, the, it's, it's my fellow Aussie motorcycles, four wheel drivers, whatever they are. They're the people that have allowed me to live the life I've lived. Yes, and I just feed back. So yes, I've, I've I just spent the last year with no work working on keeping tracks open and trying to stop stupid things like digital campground booking I saw that I, I watched that yeah yeah makes it pretty hard for older people or people oh. in the bush or oh, it's just, it's if you haven't got coverage it's where well, you can't got book range you can't book what are yep. you supposed to do half you know? the time the thing don't work either and you're talking about the northern territory where people run around with guns I mean you do not want arguments out in the bush <laughs> and uh, yeah, but that's another issue no well I'm interested in all that as well I hear you, you, they, you what I think what you're getting to not to speak for you but is that you've had a year off uh, and remained active and all that stuff. But mm. how blessed are we that, you know, you've gone to work all your life. 
90 percent of my work in life, or no, I'll say 70 percent of my work in life, I've loved. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. I've loved. Same, now a lot of same. people go to work, John, every morning, hate it yeah. for their whole life. They, they uh, must love some component of it, though. Well, you'd, uh, you'd like to think so. I mean, you know, Snag, at the, at the end of the day, like, I look at other people's lives, and I know, I, I don't know too many people who are locked into that kind of routine, but you meet, I've met plenty of male nurses and female nurses too, and I'm sure you have, mostly mm-hmm. through bike accidents and things. What wonderful people. Oh, yeah. You know? And then you get the young doctors who can perform operations and do things that are just miraculous. My younger brother, Nico, who was a bike journo, you know, he was oh, right. trying to live to ride and all the rest of it. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, he he came to me one day. <clears throat> he was, he'd been edited. He was special projects manager editor at Federals or something. And he came around and he just said, I've had a gut full of this. I'm making a lot of people rich. Yeah. You know, and he was really good. He was funny and his writing was, he said, I'm going back to my love job. To this day, he's still teaching. He's a teacher. Teaches right. delinquent kids. Oh, bless him. Yeah, and he loves it. He's 60 years old. He could, he could have been a headmaster. He could have been anything. He rides his motorbike, his old guzzy. Nevada, He'd be a bit of a legend falling into the car park with that. Oh, yeah, long hair, beard, motorbike, you know. The so he's loving. kept his idealism and lives it. Look, he gets upset like anyone else, uh, but he measures his success by how many people he teaches to read every Jeez. year. If I make a mistake, I put a conjunctive preposition in the wrong place. <laughs> you know, those people have got people's, oh, no. you know, sometimes oh. it feels futile compared to when... Well, it does. I mean, and, and even the people who are pushing pens around pages and adding up numbers, at the end of the day, there's a satisfaction for them, whether it's their superannuation, which I don't have and you probably don't have either. Not much. I've got a shed full of bikes. It's my super. And, <laughs> and, and then you've got, you've got that I know where I'm going to be factor... Like I missed half my kids' sporting events and yep. dances and things. When I was at home, I went to everything. Of course, I picked if, them up. If you're there, you go. Off, did whatever, you know. But when I wasn't at home, I missed it. And uh, and then hobbies. You know, my hobbies are motorbikes and trucks and yep. machines. So yep. I was I was okay like that. But I couldn't I couldn't. Uh, I love playing blues, and so my. Oh yeah, you're a good musician. That's oh, we'll touch no, on that as I well. I'll be good. I mean. But, but Pretty but, good from what I've seen. But it was never regular. Yes. You know, it'd yep. be like a bit gig somewhere. Um, go and help a couple of mates. It couldn't be regular because you're not at home or you don't know where you're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do anything like on Wednesday night I play table tennis. Well, no. You can't join anything like that. No, no I understand no, that. No. You can go to pubs, but anyway. Well, I had that issue a little bit though. I, I sort of stopped travelling a bit, but... Um, and it sounds really bad because I can remember hanging around with a couple of mates of mine who were tradies and good tradies and um, good people. Uh, and I'm whinging one Sunday and one of my mates, Dave, I said, what's yeah. wrong with you? I said, well, I've got to go to Spain on Monday. Oh. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and, I, and I was genuinely whinging because I didn't want to go to Spain because I yeah. want to go to one of Spencer's or Gus's bloody do's yeah. or I want to bloody have conjugal relations with my wife yeah. or sit at home. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I said, what? He said, I'm putting two new shit houses in the local footy ground. <laughs> so if you whinge about going to Spain again. You Mate, get... I'll punch you. Absolutely <laughs> shot me. And I said, you know, I said to myself, you know what? Right. He's right. Yeah. I've got to not be. I'm a lucky duck. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the cost is that you're away. Yeah. Upside is you, you're having a ball, let's be honest. Well, that's the truth of it. And, I mean, you know, most of the travelling I did, with the four-wheel drives. And when I say did, I haven't finished doing it either, but... No, we're not we're not done. We're not done, but most of it was in really remote places. And I can guarantee that there would be once or twice every couple of days I'd have this great big pang of, gee, I wish the kids could see this, or gee, I wish Karen was here to see this yes. waterhole, or, you know, oh, look at that sunset. Especially or if you're something. on your Pat Malone, you yeah. go, oh, I want to share oh, this. I'd love to share this. And, and so I sort of used to keep a book of all these places I was going to... Go the back to yeah, yeah. One day, um, but yeah, I've had those occasions too where I'd, you know, someone would go, "Are you, are you coming to Chooker's birthday party on the weekend?" And I'd say, "No, I've got to go to bloody Cape York," you know. People and, go, and they go, "Oh, you know, like, can I come too? Can yeah. I come?" I mean, people, we forget, people will spend years, especially if they're in Melbourne. And I've met more Victorians in Cape York than and Tasmanians yes. than any, is that right? Yeah, than to go to. 
because they they look at Australia and they go, one day I'm going to go right up, right the up there. What a big job. you got to take a couple of months off work. you got to save up maybe 10 grand, you yes. know. you got to do your truck up. you got to do this. It yeah, you're probably talking about a $25,000 exercise by the end of it. Yeah. yeah, you could be. Or you could just sticky tape your bank card to the dashboard of a $3,000 Pajero, folks. Well, <laughs> give it a go. Give it a go. Get don't, out there. Don't believe all the stuff I've been writing all these years and all those other guys. You don't need all the gear. <laughs> You just need to go and rely on the fact that a little bit of common sense and a whole lot of people in the bush will give you a hand. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. Bush people are great. But people are So we are, are, look, we're blessed. I I, I don't forget that. I've been lucky enough to make enough money to pay the bills out of something that I love. And I know I count my blessings every day with that. Um, Me too. And that's why you say, like, you're a long way from retired. Well, what's retirement for people like us? What are you going to do? Oh, I know. I'll go ride. Go for a ride. Oh, I'll go four wheel drive. I might go up the Cape. I'll ring up Ruthie and go up and go for a ride with him. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So we don't, you know, I don't think there is any retirement. I've got, um, I've got boxes and boxes of photos and computers full of memories of all sorts of stuff. And oh, you'd have all sorts. I want to process that. That'll be my not retirement, but. I've noticed with less travel, I spend more time sorting through the old stuff, which is going to produce things, books and, yeah. you know, But what about YouTube the Ruthie, videos? the Ruthie autobiography? In all seriousness, what that I'd read that. Yeah. Do you know, I had a good lesson in autobiographies, right? And I have thought about it, but I, I don't know which... Anyway, it's, it's kind of hard, and I'll tell you why. The bloke who runs my local swimming pool, I still go swimming whenever I'm at home. You know, I would be a really fit guy if I spent a whole year at home, but <laughs> because I don't eat much rubbish and I mostly because the handbrake feeds me cardboard, you know, but, and I, and I go Just bicycle. keeping you alive, yeah, mate. Yeah, I go bicycle. I don't wear Lycra and I go swimming. I don't want to see that, John. No, you don't. No, I don't. So my local pool, right, the, the lifeguard down there, he's got fuzzy hair, his name's John and um, he runs the pool. He's about my age and. We're just yarning one day, and he said, you're a journo, aren't you? I said, yeah. And he said, can you help me with my book? And you would have had this too. And I just had this massive moment of, oh, no, not another book about being a pool owner or something. You know what I mean? Like people write, oh, my life is a a, a career laptop hinge Mm. specialist or something, you know. I mean, a laptop, you know, does require (laughs) the hinge, but I don't know if I... (laughs) It could be a wild life. So anyway, I said, well, what's it about? And he said, well... You wouldn't remember, but, and then he told me, because I, I wasn't really into pop music yep. in, in the day, but back in the late 1970s, he was in a band that got a number one record all over the world, and his name was Fuzzy John, and you're going to ask me, what's the name of the band? What's the name of the band? I can't tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> they wore bell bottoms. Well, you can get on the Google now, and the <laughs> Fuzzy John. It, well, that was his but name. But they hide that. that. People, people like yeah. that have this nugget. That they think's unimportant. So, so he had this amazing couple of years where they were like top build all over the world. You know? Yeah, yeah. And he's telling me about how he'd try and get off the stage in Sweden, only to be greeted by all these girls. I can't can't even say the things that went on. Right? Wanton and wanton happy. and lustful and very pleased to see him and. All right, and we're back again, John. I had to change a battery, and you had to. I don't very, know what you did very out there. Efficient, what did you do? Thought, mate. Very, what, what did you think? Me? Oh. No, what do you think about me and technology? <laughs> oh, look, I'm amazed. Well, there. fuck, You're so am I. totally amazed. I'm, you can actually do this. Mate, I, well, <laughs> I, let me tell you, it's it's not done. It's not done. <laughs> I never count my chooks. This is the points and carb you're at a GoPro, is it? <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can put a carb in front of me. I'm all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I just, uh, it's, we're of an age, aren't we? We are, mate. We're on of an age. Yeah, it's a funny thing, isn't it? You know, I um, I took a an old car to Carby down to the local garage to use their, oh, yeah, yeah. their cleaning thing the other day. I had the apprentice come over and say, can I watch you put that back together? I said, why? He said, I've never seen anyone put a carburetor together. I guess it not. It was like shock horror. I guess not. But I can't plug in fuel injection, so, you know. Well, I know now, and I don't know, you pro- you're a bit smarter than me in this area, but I drive an old Mercedes. Well, when I say an old, ten-year-old Mercedes. Thank God for rich people because when they trade them in, I uh, the, yeah, ten-year-old German for, car, cheapest chips. I buy them for. Well, I paid eleven grand for that. Ooh, wow. No, it's a bloody it's a 2011 Mercedes Benz. Anyway, oh, my the point. Snag. Wow. My point is, 
if I open up the bonnet, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. And no. I can't get to anything no. anyway. No. So if I get the slightest warning light or anything, and sometimes, as you well know, the warning light, you know, or your bloody cigarette light is, light is yeah. broken, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it'll go into limp mode. Yeah. Um, whereas if my old HT Holden, there was two problems. You, either, you, you had no bloody liquid or no <laughs> fire. Well, do you know, I mean, I think... I was having this discussion with a German mate of mine. We were actually talking about the R18 BMW. That's right. how it started, right? Yeah, excuse me, and, yes. And then it got into, uh, I mean, he's, he's like me. He's got all sorts of bikes and he's just, he's been riding bikes all his life. Right. Um, just like us, you know, yes. his bike knowledge is right up there. And he's going, you know, John, he said, what's changed is I go on my, uh, my German accent's atrocious, isn't it? But I think we'll get into trouble for <laughs> cultural inappropriation <laughs> oh, or some bloody thing. Oh, okay. And we're holding back, folks. <laughs> we're really holding back here. <laughs> so, um, you know, he, he's saying, I go on the, the forums for my Triumph Street Scrambler. He said, everybody's talking about what colour jacket to wear and which boots look good with which pair of pants and which tank job. <laughs> I said... Well, what do you expect, mate? You know, there's nothing else they can talk about now. You can't no. talk about what tools I need to carry because the reality is a mobile phone and a credit card yes. is it for yes. so many bikes. I mean, uh, thank goodness modern bikes are so good they don't break down a lot. Well, they don't. That's the upside. That's They're the very upside. reliable. And the tubeless tyre thing, even with the, oh, what was I looking at the other day, spoked wheels. The new BM, spoked wheels, tubeless tyres. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fantastic. It's a very clever system, that. Very clever. You know, that mid-mounted yeah. setup that has it yeah. has an airtight ring. Exactly. I mean, I get a flat tyre on my Harley. <clears throat> I've got the tubeless gear there, even though it's got tubes. Yes. That's my first point of call. Yes. A couple of gas tubes might get me to a garage where I can borrow their jack and change the wheel. Yes. You know? <clears throat> but it's... um. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's what's changed, hasn't it? You know, like I uh, I can fix my old shitters wherever I am yeah. to some degree. Yeah, yeah. On the way down here, you'll I, get you'll get there you, somehow. I'll somehow get there. You yeah, know, unless yeah. it's a a real tragedy. Yep. Just a little while ago, um, we were testing a, a brand new Range Rover up Cape York. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, it's actually about 12 years ago. Right. I should mention. But they were pretty flash. They haven't spoken to me since, by the way. So what happened? I've got to hear <laughs> this. Okay. So we, we had that and we had about four other new vehicles. And it, it's a beautiful thing. 160 grand's worth of, of vehicle. Absolutely lovely. Went through one washout full of water a little bit too quick. N yes. Not me. That doesn't matter. Yes. I would have done it quicker because it would have made a better video shot. Yes. Came out the other end, limp home mode. Okay. Oh, strike. So we got a satellite phone. I ring up headquarters in, in Land Rover. Uh, what do I do? And they said, well, you'll have to reset it. So how do you do that? Well, you take the key out and you stick three feathers behind your left ear and you walk 200 <laughs> metres away and dance the dance of the sugar plum fairy or something and then come back and do four rotations counterclockwise, put the key in, turn it again, it should go. So I do all this, doesn't go. Okay, still in limpo mode. Where are you? Well, I'm about 200k south of the Jardine. Well, just leave it there. We'll come and pick it up. I, I just just laugh. leave it there. Yeah, there'll I, be nothing there when you get home. <laughs> exactly. I said, listen, mate. If I do that, you'll be picking up a burnt out shell by tomorrow. And someone will be very glad of their new chairs on the porch, and someone else will have some lovely wheels. We'll have and a good stereo, and, and yeah, 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 you know. And uh, so they go, well, what can you do? I said, the only thing I can do is. Um, uh, skull drag it to the river, you know. So what's, we, what's skull drag? Oh, that's just because it's so low to the ground, and you've got that hump in the middle of the tracks through yes. most of the rough tracks. So, yeah. so basically, it's it's just grind it there. So it oh, drove under Christ. its own steam for most of it. When it didn't, we skull dragged it, pulled it with a a, a chain, you just know? dragged it, yeah. just dragged it through. Geez, that's going to be doing some damage, ooh, isn't it? Ooh, ooh, Leaving bits ooh, here and bits ooh, there. It looked horrible. <laughs> you know what was wrong with it? It had, it turned out, I could have fixed it if I'd known, but I had no idea. It was just one little plastic piece that operated a potentiometer which told the computer where, what setting the air suspension was on in each corner so that it could adjust it relative to everything, which is beautiful when it's working. When it's working. When it breaks. But that's, that actually probably should never have stopped it, should it? A Toyota? 
my old Toyota, I'll break a spring or stick a log under there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I came home in Milo once. <laughs> this is my, my, I only tell one of these stories. There's a million of them. <laughs> Go on. Sorry, guys, it's a four-wheel drive story. But, but if you know <laughs> the machines... <laughs> yeah, they don't mind. It's a Ruthie story. That'll do. I've been away six weeks. I'm up in the West Kimberleys, and it's been a really hard trip. And part of that trip was uh, the rear universals. The rear um, axle came loose very slowly, and I didn't realise. Normally, I check it every day. I was being slack. And I was on the Munger track, which is all rocky and six days, 200 k's anyway... The next thing I realised, oh, I've got a problem here, and I chewed out the pinion right, into yep. the diff. Well, that's all right. It's four-wheel drive. Pull the drive shaft out, wire the back axle back in, which you can do, yep. and drive on the front axle. Yes. Then yep. I broke a CV right. on okay. one side, the left-hand CV. So that's all right because I've got a locking diff. So I've got one-wheel drive on the front right-hand wheel. <laughs> but we finished filming, one and it's drive. only 4,500 k's home. Oh, so I thought, no worries. I'll just take it easy. I'll get home because sometimes – well, I, I, I take great pride in getting whatever it is home if I can. It's, yeah, only, yeah. it's, it's only been trailered once in my life. Uh, once for the bike too, come to think of it, Ruby. Anyway, so I drove home. I found this brilliant thing on the way home. Every time I came up behind a truck, I'd floor it. And because it's pulling on the right-hand front, we'd pull out automatically and go fast. Uh. <laughs> and then I'd back off and it would let go and come back uh. in again all on its own. <laughs> uh, what was it? Torque steer. Torque, Torque steer. Torque steer. Torque steer. It's a new thing. It's a, it's but yeah, well, no, you got home all right? Got home all right. Well, that's, that but, says something, doesn't it? But, you know, it's like this trip. I was thinking about that this morning as I kick-started Ruby into life and I've got a list of things I have to fix this Arvo. But anyway... I thought, why are you doing this to yourself? I've got a, a perfectly good old LT BMW at home, a 93 yes. uh, LT. I liked them. And I loved it. I loved them when I tested them new. Yep. And I waited till the right one came up, got hold of it. Anyway, it's a beautiful old bike. Perfect for a trip like this. They never yes. break down. They've got no. tubeless tyres if you get a flat. The, and, and you can fix them. Yeah, you know? yeah. They don't break. So it was perfect. Under stressed yeah, thing. Yeah. I rode it to last year's Chumps down in Victoria and the one that got cut off by fire. But but then I realised, no, the reason I didn't was because time didn't matter, you know? Right. COVID time didn't matter. Got no jobs. Take as long as I want. Turn the trip into a real adventure. So on the way here, I met three lovely guys over at Torquay or, uh, Automotive just behind yep. Bunnings. Had a chin oil. You know, I met, I met a lovely lady posty up in... Um, uh, Gunda Windy, yep. who stopped because I'm on the side of the road with the toolkit open and told me lots of tall, tall stories about being a posty. Fantastic. You know, you just meet people because you're out having an adventure. Mm. Which brings me back to that, don't worry about preparing. You know, Thomas Willecki rode a 250 Honda trail bike right around Australia. Yeah. Um, Probably a good choice. It was. It yeah, was. yeah, that'd be yeah. a good choice. Do not sit there going, I will need... $40,000 worth of kit yep. before I can do this trip. Yep. Never, ever think that. No. You go, I am going to do this trip and I'm going to spend the money on fuel and if there's any left over, I'm going to spend it on beer and if something goes wrong, I'm going to deal with it then. There on the spot. And yep. that is the, your adventure. Yeah, that's Otherwise, right. Otherwise, you're not going to have adventure. Yeah. You're going to wind up having happy hour with all the other people in their caravans at six o'clock. Yep. So, Couldn't agree more. You know. As you probably know, I'm going around Australia on yeah, in, no. in July, and um, what you, you're saying resonates with me at the moment. In that, a good mate of mine said to me, "I was going to if Spuds and Christ knows what," and uh, he said, "Mate, there's always a hundred reasons not to do it." Mm. He said, "You just need one reason to do it." Yep. And that was a real that, that rang a bell to me. He goes, It'll, "There'll never be a perfect time. Not life doesn't line up like that. No. You get it as close as you can." And there'll be some shit on the track. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. And you there'll be times go. you're going, why am I doing this? Yeah. But they'll probably become one of the more endearing parts of the story later on where, like you said, someone comes out and sees you're, <clears throat> you're in the shit. Oh, come over. I've got XYZ tools or you yeah. need a place to sleep. You can sleep on my couch. Yeah. That sort of stuff's where <clears throat> the stories come from, isn't it? And I reckon people that do the Luxo, I'm, mate, I'm happy to do Luxo. Oh, Luxo's day. cool. Luxo's all right. But they don't get that side of it. No, they don't. They, they really don't. They miss it. I mean, um, Ruby, prime example. I'm actually going to visit a little town. I won't say where. Right. 
because it's an embarrassing story. But about <laughs> mate, we love embarrassing stories. <laughs> so sixteen years ago, I get a flat tire, right? Yeah. And I'm coming back from a biker do in Melbourne on Ruby, and I'm taking back roads because various reasons my mental state is not that good, and I want to take my time. Understood. I do not want to ride. Take it ride. all in. Yeah. I want to take. Take it in and not just ride straight up the hill. You're the king right. of the euphemism, fair to go, but go, <laughs> go on. So there I am. It's a Saturday morning and I see the sign that says blah, blah, 5Ks just as the tyre goes <laughs> and oh, she geez. wobbles all over the road. So you know, what can I do? I, I looked at it. I tried my Finelec. I tried my automatic patches or, and everything lasted about 200 yards. I got a little bit closer to town. I could see a garage in the distance. It looked like it was open. It was only a little one. I just pushed the bike into it. I walk in. I say, oh, there's a couple of guys there sitting on drums having a beer, you know. And I said, um, hey, do you mind if I use your tyre gear and a jacket? I'd just change my tyre, you know. I've got a spare tube. I'd... And the bloke said, yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, yeah, but not right now. Sit down and have a beer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I sat down and had a beer, right. Anyway, a few more guys come. One of them was getting married the next day oh, on a Sunday. So right. this was his bucks night. Right. Okay. Getting so, married the next day is always a bad move. Exactly. I mean, if you're going to have a bucks night, have it in Tasmania well, three weeks before. Absolutely. Know? Do not have it anyway. Where there's no electricity or something. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. No communication. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so, um, so there I am, you know, I'm sitting on a drum drinking their beer. And then I bought a carton, you know, one of the guys that's going to the pub and blah, and blah, and blah. Well, we became best mates, you yes. know, and I stayed on someone's veranda. I never even got close to the bike. Yes. They wheeled it into the shed and we jacked it last up. Last you saw of it. Far, that was the last I saw of it. So <laughs> next day, I wake up on the veranda, bacon and eggs, you know. You got any better clothes than that? Why? Oh, you're coming to the wedding. You know? <laughs> hey, you know, I don't know anyone. No, nah, you'll be right. So, yeah, we want you to give a speech. Oh. Why? Well, you're the only one nobody around here knows. <laughs> so, oh, okay, all right. Something whatever. new to say. Yeah, exactly, something new to say. <laughs> and so so anyway, we had the usual pre-wedding, you know, preparations. Oh, God. And off we go. The wedding's in the in the little social bowling club. And, um, oh, mate, I had a great time. I gave a speech. I danced with all the girls. I just had a wonderful time. I woke up somewhere else completely. <laughs> went and found the bike you know the boys are dragging themselves in i was stuck in that town for three days yeah and they've all become best mates yes and i go back now and it's good hey john how you going all from a busted bike all from a busted bike yeah and yeah what would you do that's you know? a great story it, well it it's that's what there's happens. lots of them in there but that's the the pick of the bunch yeah yeah you know yeah what I mean? yeah that's and, and something had to go wrong for that to happen yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. and so life is, um, if life is just steady and uh, reliable and boring and everything, it will be boring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if it's got a few humps yep. and a few hills you've got to climb over and a couple of diversions, yep. then that's when things get exciting. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And I think motorcyclists particularly, yes. there's a lot of reasons why I like motorcyclists, but one, <laughs> one of them- Because you is one, mate. Because I am one. You want to like yourself a little bit, don't you? Uh, well, that's a battle. That's a battle after time. That's another story. But oh dear, um, I like the way motorcyclists. You know, if if you've been stuck on the side of the road, if you've ridden motorbikes for any period of time, yeah. at some point either you have been stuck on the road or you're gonna be, mm. and it can be a problem. I mean, you mm. it can be pissing down rain. You can't leave the. You've got to become resourceful, and you've got to think about. Well, I you know, if I have to sleep next to this bike, I can do that. Um, what I find with motorcyclists, other problems in life come up and they generally have an optimistic view of, oh, well, what the hell, you know, I'll do X, Y, Z. And... Do you know, mate, look, I, I can remember in in my outlaw times, you know, every now and then you get some idiot, you know, He's you know, going to have, have his it, bit. You get it in the four-wheel drive world too. You get it You get it in, in any world. You walk into a pub and there's three or four bulls in the wrong paddock and you get this. Well, as a motorcyclist, number one, how on earth can you be frightened of anything? Mm. How can a motorcyclist be frightened of anything? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because I can hurt myself on my motorcycle a whole lot quicker than you can with your baseball bat. Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes. Like, <laughs> it's just give up on it. Yeah, what Go have you, sit what down in the you've corner, got nothing mate. That... You've got nothing to throw at me. Yeah, yeah. And so I think in my mind, that's where... 
It's the same thing with the intrepid adventurers you meet. The guys who are quite happy to take the wife and drive a four-wheel drive right across the Canning stock route. They've never been there. They've got no idea. Off they go. They'll do it, yeah. You know, Leyland Brothers in the early days, whatever. Just people who didn't know what they were doing, heading bush. And and it's the same with motorcyclists. You, you, at the end of the day, you ride bikes all your life, there's a fair chance you've got no fear. And that no fear will project through into your whole life. Yes. You yeah, know? Yeah. You might wind up divorced more than most blokes because yes. at the end of the day, you're not frightened to tell this woman that, well, enough is enough. Or, or, or man or whatever, or man yeah. Or, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's um, it's um, a state of mind. It's a very different thing. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and most of the good motorcycles I know, um, I, I've got this theory that, like, say you and I will go away together on the weekend. Now, we might ride together, we might not, whatever. We'll end up in the same place. You feel like you're riding together. You do. But you're actually alone in your helmet. Yes. You're not actually communing. So when we get off the bike, you know, I know if you're anything like me, I could have thought about bloody from... Anything. I could, yeah, Nietzsche to, you know, yep. bloody, uh, you know, bananas in pyjamas. So it's not all highbrow, but something along the lines I've thought, oh, I'll, I'll talk to Ruthie a bit or when yeah. I have a beard and I want to ask X, Y, Z a bit. You've had some thought. So when you sit in a car, you're either not talking yeah. or fill in the air sometimes. There's lots of good talks to be had in a car. I know that. Of course. That, all day you've been in your helmet. Or you listen thinking. to music, or I mean, I drive. I listen to podcasts, to audible books when I'm on my own. In Same. The truck. That's what I do too. Now, ever since they came out with decent Bluetooth headphones and yes. stuff, um, I've been listening to stuff in the car. Cannot do it on the bike. Yeah. Okay. And, and I did a lot of work with um, uh, Black Dog in recent. Oh years. yeah, yeah. Well, and tell me about that. Male depression. Well, no. When I say I did a lot of work, I mean. I just I helped out with some fundraisers and yeah. I'm quite happy to go and talk to people when they're a bit depressed. I I did some men's shed stuff, you know, which in my mind is that's a bit of a a real issue for men. They they suddenly they don't have a job. They tend to lose most of their social life at the same time. Yes, if their social life is based around their job, they're not seeing those people. That's right, and and at the same time, you know, it's time to downsize to an apartment. So you lose your shed, and you mm. haven't got your car to tinker with, or whatever it is. And and so you do a lot of work with these people. And someone told me once, you know, we're just talking. They said, um, uh, depression is thinking about the past, anxiety is thinking about the future. Mm. The only solution. To not be depressed is to live in the moment. Yeah, that's when a good, you ride that's a, a very motorcycle, good. you are a hundred percent in the moment. Yeah, you are. You, if you're not, you're, there's something not right. Exactly, and I'll tell you the other thing too. When you're in a four wheel drive battling your way up Goat's Track in the rain in the Victorian high country, you're in the moment. You're in the moment because to not be in the moment is to be down in the gully yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and it's it's that it's that thing that in my mind is that living in the moment, what you were just talking about, mm. you know, you're going along. I remember testing an intercom system once and I had this, this is before I got married, had a Danish girlfriend, Meta Magnuson, wonderful girl. We had this intercom system, first one I'd ever tried. After about 25 minutes, we pulled into a garage to fuel up. I accidentally ran it over. <laughs> Oh, man. Three times. <laughs> backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. It didn't suit you? <laughs> oh, not, not your go? Uh, no, I just didn't want to be talked at. And well, I do I do use an intercom system from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I like to listen to podcasts like you. Yes. Um, I've got used to that, but my view of an intercom system is, Ruthie, i got to get fuel. That's all I'm probably going to say to you today. Yeah. We don't want to discuss politics or whatever or... You know, do you feel like a beer? So fang and past and going like, here's me petrol tech isn't going to do it for well, you. Well, look, I can survive that. But I remember, he'll remain nameless, a very good friend of mine, who I do love, I do love. But we travelled across Europe on a couple of GSs and we had one of those very austere, very uh, early intercom systems. Okay. Well, fuck me if he didn't want to talk about <laughs> existentialism and bloody, you know, pre postmodern bloody politics in the Ukraine. Oh, no. And we get to this lunch stop. I said, mate, th these, <laughs> these are supposed to be about I need fuel, not... Yeah. Anyway, oh, what's wrong with you? I said, well, can you just, you know, back it up a touch? 
Get back on. Away he goes again. So, well, I learnt that the off switch was good. <laughs> he never missed me, John. He didn't know I had to listen because he, 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 he had two mouths and one ear. But, uh, you know, it's funny, but I think I was just thinking about this, right? And in Victoria, with your shorter distances, the number of great pubs you've got, the number of fantastic cafes. Yes. Connected together by brilliant bits of windy road. Yes. I can imagine how, like, my mates in the Castlemaine Mafia up there, you know, our mates. Oh, Jonestown. Yeah, <laughs> Jonestown. <laughs> Don't drink the call. Yeah, do not drink the Kool Aid up there, mate. Oh, let me tell you. no. I'll tell you what. No, look, there's a great bunch of ours, just to fill you in. Yeah. Big bunch of our mutual friends who have shifted to um, a rural town in. Uh, in Victoria, Castlemaine, and, and they're having a ball. They're, they're, they're yeah. mostly retired and motorcyclists and a um, great bunch of spouses. It's, a, it's all good. It's but all I'll... good. It's really good. In fact, it's glorious. It makes me jealous. But at the end of the day, if you go for a ride in Victoria, you go, okay, we're going to go two, three, four hundred k's. You're not going very far. And you'll boot around some beautiful roads. I can imagine a discussion along the lines of, I want to stop at McVeigh's pub. No, I want to go to... You know, blah, yeah, because yeah. they serve a better steak or, yep. you know, you can imagine Grant Roth chiming in with, look, I'm not stopping anywhere that doesn't have a good red wine, you know. and That and does sound a bit like Grant. Or I was with him in Tasmania. John, once. can you hold that thought? <laughs> I've just had a look. We've got, we've got another battery change to do. No worries. This is um, a little bit technically uh, challenged. I'll be back in, well, John and I will be back in a minute. You, you might want to go for a piss or uh, tell <laughs> your missus your lover. Whatever, or, you know, change the points on your EH. But we'll be right back. Oh, we're back, John. Yes. What did back. you do? Did you just talk amongst yourself or what? <laughs> I rang your wife and told her I loved her. Oh, Wasn't that what you said? Not again. <laughs> I'll tell you what. No, no. no I'm staying out. <laughs> I'm staying out of that one. I want, you know, you, the thing about digital stuff, as you well know, if I, you and I used to make a mistake in a, a print magazine. Yeah. It was it like, out. well, they ended up in the shit house at the local mechanics anyway. Yes. Uh, dog eared, and that was about the size of it. But if you say anything digital, yeah, it's there forever, mate. Mate, I think that's why the world is such a, pardon the phrase, soft cock place. Yeah, no, look, I hear, you. I hear. You. Everyone's got a phone. You can you can screw up in just the smallest possible way, and everybody can. Everyone knows it, about it. You know, in the old days, you'd screw up. You'd walk out of there and say, well, I've done me dash in this town. I'll go to another town. I shouldn't have done that. No. Yeah, you know, I get I, that. I learned my lesson, but. You do, yeah, no, I feel sorry. Hasn't stopped me doing stupid stuff, though. No, but I, gee, the world's become a horribly politically correct well, place look, because of Well, look, I it. see, I think a lot of, you know, we're getting into an area here, yeah. but I do believe, that, look, we wouldn't be far apart. We're not exactly the same, but we wouldn't be far apart. My, my thoughts are that there's a lot of things needed to change. Too right. A lot of things Too right. needed a good, hard look at. Too right. Um, but in some ways, the swing, the pendulum of social change mm. swings very wide before it finds its right spot. And you just said it there. The problem is, you know, pendulum was up here. Yep. It should be here. It's gone whooshka over there. And you know what that means, don't you? It's not going to stop. It's no. going to come back. Back out the here, other side. And then it's going to pop out the other side again. So before long... We'll have monks wrapping their thighs with barbed wire or something stupid. You know what I mean? Like well, this... I hope that sense prevails mm. i mean i'm an optimist I, I i'm pretty happy with the world and i think young people are good people i don't think they're any different than we were uh, no. people the, are people the one thing that i have noticed and and that is that as the world tightens up so to speak as life in the cities gets more prohibitive and more constrained and there's more things you're not allowed to do there's more people getting into motorcycles yes Heaps more, and there's more people getting into going bush and yes. for the freedoms that it brings. You yes, know? and um, I think COVID's had a bit to do with that. Know, COVID's had an awful lot to. It's almost like COVID turned the dial right up, but it was happening already. Yes, and was it, yeah. It's going to happen more. You know, I've seen it with my own kids and and that generation. It's like um, they didn't need to, but. Look at the strength of motorcycling at the moment. It's it's gangbusters. It's it, and it's a lifestyle, you know. We, we've but who would have picked it. that, John? We, no, I would have never picked that. Remember what we used to say 20, 30 years ago? We'd go, "Geez, if motorcycles were invented now, they wouldn't allow them." Well, by crikey, you could say that now with a factor of ten. Yes, really, could very you? much you so. Know? But what's happening? Oh no, there's signs, motorcycle parking or motorcycle friendly town or yeah. you know, thank you, Bertrand Kadat, for kicking that one off. But yes. God God bless him, God another bless one we him. lost. Yeah, but all over the place, 
motorcycles have become more friendly. Um, and out in the bush too, not so much on the coastline, but certainly out in the bush. In the real bush. In the real bush. There's a whole lot of towns have opened up, not just to motorcycle. You'll see the pubs advertising, you know. Motorcycle friendly. Motorcycle friendly. Yeah. Come on in. And they've got, got a, a shed to put your bike yeah, in at night. Yeah, and they got, and, and then you'll also find a lot of these places are opening up their riverfronts to free camping and stuff like that. I yeah, mean, yep. This is what I'm seeing in the That's bush. a great idea. It's a great idea. It saved little Texas out yes. on the Queensland New South Wales border. Place was, you know, they get they get to under fourteen hundred people or something. It's not big enough for a primary school or yes. something like that. Yes, or yes. Big enough for a that's very important too, well, isn't it? It is, you know, because then you lose a whole strata of people yeah. from a tiny little town that's a long way from anywhere. Yeah. And so what they did was they they opened up the public toilets and things. And they opened up the river bank to camping. Well, they let people know they became RV friendly. Yes. You know, motorcycle friendly. Yes. And all of a sudden, bang, town's back in business, cruising yes. along. And, um, Great. It's a lesson I've been, a, a lot of what I did this last year was talking to people in councils. Yes. Or, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, which is about as, side, as exciting as making a brick sandwich out of your head sometimes. But, <laughs> but by crikey, it does the number. You know well, it's I mean? important. It's important. I, uh, to that end, I recently... Um, I did four days with with uh, my business partner. Uh, he's got his GS, and I got my XR, and um, we decided to look at free camps. Yes. And um, one comes to mind in a place called Tumbarumba, which you probably know yep. up in the high country there. Cold. Just yep. out of the town, um, they've built an area. It sits on the river. It's there's nothing flash, but it's a nice flat ground for mm. starters. That's number one. A bit of cover. Um, they even had hot, running hot water. Wow. Which is like. Over, that that's there. right that's over awesome. the top. Yeah. And a flush dunny, which after you've been on the road for a while, <laughs> feeding a flush dunny is like, I spent about an hour in there just bloody marvelling at it. <laughs> oh, <like>. dear. <laughs> but it, it, we won't go into it. But they've done a really good job. It, yeah. It's it's uh, pretty austere, as I was saying, but it's um, well done. There's running hot water. Someone comes and cleans it about every third day, so it's not a shit fight. And I was talking to one of the blokes in town. Now, it's about 5K out of town. Mm. And it's, of course, it's the Tumbarumba Council, whatever local council's yeah. there, because they encourage you, if you stay there, to go on into town to grab your grog, maybe have a cannery at the pub, which we, you know, we of do. course you do. Of course you do. You go, you buy your milk, bread, yep. blah, blah, blah. And they've worked out that doing that brings a lot of money and interest back into town. So I'm seeing more and more of that. It's very, some of them are just falling apart and not well done. Um, but the ones that are well done, they're free. Yeah. Um, and there's a degree, look, I don't know, you're, you're a stronger man than me, but there's times when I worry about security when you're out in the middle of nowhere sometimes, especially on a motorbike. No. I worry about someone knocking something off. No, you got no, no. Nothing to worry about? No, look, um, no, not really. It's, in my mind, um, in all the time I've been travelling, yes. you know, the only stuff that's ever gone missing has been the obvious stuff. For instance, when I left the windows down in a tiny town in Western Australia and someone climbed in, stole all the cash out of the ashtray. Right. You know, yep. the dollar, opportunistic. Opportunistic. Kind of. um, it's, most theft is, is tied into drug problems, uh, youth, yep. um, stuff like that, you know. And so it's hijinks. It's not... We're There's out no looking. Theft. No, yeah, no, yeah. we're out looking for a GS BMW. Yeah. So, um, at the end of the day, I, th I think Australia is probably the safest country. Despite really, we, you hear about the you hear about the bad things. How often do you hear? Not very often. No. You know, really. That's a true. Australia is a wonderfully safe place to travel. Um, I know lots of of ladies who travel on their own. I've met them all over the country. Yep. And staying in tents on bikes and stuff. Yeah, staying in tents on bikes, uh, you know, swagging it next to a four-wheel drive, whatever they're doing. Yeah. You, know, you meet them all over the place. They don't have any issues. No. You know, I mean... Well, even a sook like me might be all right. Oh, snag. Hey? <laughs> the biggest danger you're going to run into is an evil hangover somewhere, I reckon. <laughs> well, I've, get... packed some, I've packed some Panadol, don't worry about <laughs> it. No, Jeez. you'll have a ball, mate. You don't worry about... I mean, common sense. 
Yeah, no. of course. Don't we, don't do dumb stuff. No, we were talking about this the other day. If if a town has got, and some of them do in some of the more remote regions, if up they, around Derby and places yeah, like that, you've got to keep your wits about. If they got, they? if they've got a compound for people who are staying overnight, yeah, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason for it. So don't stay there. Yeah. Get out of town. Yeah, get you out were saying to me, get you out know? in the bush where you're not. Get out into the What'd bush. What'd you say? K off the road's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, look, it's like motorcycle theft. What did you say? Headlight distance off yeah, the road. headlight distance so you can find the road if you need to get back to it. Yeah, That's yeah, all. yeah. But at the end of the day, um, okay, and then you go, oh, if you're a city kid, you're not, but, well, to some degree, you might go, hey, snakes, insects, bugs, whatever. What about that? They're going to hurt oh, me. I think I'll be right This is Australia. That. No, that's a rumour we spread for the rest of the yeah, world. Yeah, keep you keep out, you out. bastards. At the end of the day, you light yourself a little fire. Yeah. You know, a tiny little fire. Make sure you don't set fire to the bush. No, that's important. That yeah. It's really important. You light a tiny little fire. The smoke, an Aussie bush animal gets a whiff of smoke. doesn't matter what they are. They're out of they're there. They're out of there. Because it's not as, good news. No. You make as much noise as you can when you get there. You don't pat around in your socks looking for a big rock to take a poop on. Yeah. You yeah. know? You make a lot of noise, make a bit of smoke. You're dead safe. So you, you sound like a bloke that's done... You, you should get into the 4x4 four four and camping game. <laughs> you sound like a bloke knows a little bit about it. <laughs> well, you know, a long time before even before even the motorbikes, my brother and I were uh, uh, prospectors, Nico and I, and, and we just... We bush camped all over the country. We lived off the land. We did all sorts of things because, A, we didn't have a lot of money. B, we often didn't know what the rules were. And C, we just were having fun trying to make a living. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, okay, so we're bush kids, but we uh, never had any real issues doing that. Yeah. And it's like common sense, you know. I had this, dis- I had this discussion with you about uh, roadkill. Yes, you know? yeah, we're talking about roadkill. Yeah, what do yeah. I do? You know, I'm riding around Australia, 180 miles an hour. No, no. <laughs> I don't if think you... I said that. But well, go no. But... <laughs> yeah, I, for the sake of the exercise. <laughs> Warning to my friend Rod and Broom Police. <laughs> He's coming, mate. <laughs> 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 You'll just see a flash. <laughs> no, but look, at the end of the day, uh, on the way down here, Newell Highway, usually that's a place where you see roadkill. There isn't any roadkill. I can't smell any. The grass is really high. It's been raining a lot. Safe to travel. Yes. Until the sun goes down. Yes. Sun up, sun down. After that. Yeah. 80 k's an hour. Yeah. You know, and that way if you do hit something, you got a it's chance in a of living. or a bike, you've got a chance of living. Yeah, yeah. So you just, you peg a lot of common sense. Yeah. If your gut feeling says, gee, these people are looking at me a bit strange, move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But yeah, I, just, just yeah, have your yeah, wits about you. Yeah, just have some wits about you, you know. Actually, you're right. That smell thing's important. It smells everything. Because, like, you smell that three, say, three roos that you can't mm. see. Mm. You, well, and you do smell them, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Well, these days, what's going on? I mean, in a lot of places, the council actually will have a, a truck that goes out and pulls the roadkill off the road. Yeah. I see morning. sometimes they're painted. Yes. You've seen that? They paint the yeah, road. I think if you it. can take the time to paint it, pick it up. Yeah, but that's to tell the next guy to pick it up. I mean, <laughs> that's real cheeky. <laughs> Is that right? You it's want to be the bloke cheeky. with the paint, <laughs> not the next bloke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you see three wombats in a row. Yeah, there's know, wombats here. There's wombats here. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's just common sense. The whole thing is common sense. And yeah. if you've got a lot of time on your own, riding a bike, driving a truck, whatever you're doing, you think about these things, read the signs, yep. get it together. And you will. You, you, oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to get out there and all your life skills... Yeah, they come handy. They will suddenly all come together and be in focus as you motor around the country. Mm. And weather. But I see people say, you know, they say, oh, we're going off around Australia. When I say, when are you going? They say, December. Oh, how are yeah, you gonna, right. Which yeah, part are you doing? Tasmania? Yeah, how are you going to go in the north? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, why? What? Why? I think people don't recognise it's a frontier out there. It's a massive country. They don't yes. realise that that whole top band is monsoonal. Yes. You know, like you don't go up Cape York any time after November mm. to, to early April. Not if you want to get out. Not if you want to get out. And most of the local people have already left. So yeah. there's nothing up there. There's yeah. no nothing garages to see or do won't anyway. be open. It'll only be Mapoon right at the top where the locals don't go anywhere. Yeah. And even they'll stop work for four months. Right, you know? four months. Oh yeah, yeah. Because oh, just yeah. nothing's happening. Oh well, you know they keep themselves going, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why is nothing happening? Because it's too wet in the afternoon, and in the morning everything's muddy. Yes. You know. Yes. It was the same when we were mining. I mean, it, it doesn't. Oh, it's Monday, but it's raining. Let's go to work. No, it's raining. The clay's wet. The ladders are slippery. The belts will slip. 
the machines will run like crap and will probably fall over and slide under a dump truck. So you just don't, you don't. go to work when it's raining. Yeah. You go to the yeah. pub. Yeah. Find out where you're going to go to work next. Well, I mean, <laughs> it seems like a reasonable... Well, it was. Doesn't it? Yeah, all your research is done in the pub. <laughs> Whoops. Well, oh, look, at Johnny's rearranging the furniture. He's only been here five minutes. Sorry about that. Well, look, I... I I could talk to you all day, mate, and uh, and you and I will talk at yeah, Chumps no. to the point where we're boring each other shitless. <laughs> there's no doubt, and there's another. Uh, I should tell you, Chumps is just a. It's a way of a bunch of old journo mates getting together and being able to write. It was a tax symposium, <laughs> so that's what we do. We go to a pub in the bush, um, we book a room, and we yeah. each, um, or John, you know, he hedges his beds. And uh, <laughs> I didn't get a room, hey. Didn't you? You know, I've got to bring well, you're not bag. sleeping with me, I'm telling you. Right? No. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to buy me a drink. It's all right, mate. Do you know, it's that it's that sense of adventure. I, oh, know I'll I get can't there, wait. I'll get there, someone will look after me somewhere down there. Mate, the there'll always be a space on the bed, on the shape, on the floor, or whatever. It's you normally know, on the In front floor. of the fire. Quite often it's under the bar near the fire. Near the piano. Right. Yeah. You're near the piano. The piano is there this week too. Is it? You, did you bring your harp? Oh, I did, but there's no Brumby to play the piano. Do you Spence play can piano? play the piano. Can he? Is yeah. he he's coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. There he just go. needs to run through a 12 bar and let you loose. And then we're off and away. <laughs> Johnny, Thank mate, you. it's an absolute pleasure, mate. Absolutely. Um, and our, our people are going to love this. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope. And I really appreciate you. Oh, look, give us a plug too. Where do we get in contact with you? What's the best way to see you? Oh, okay. Well, um, uh, Ruthie, R W T H Y, Facebook, uh, the YouTube channel's going off at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm out there. Look for Ruthie, yeah. and um, yeah, uh, he's got a million stories. Most of them are true. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> See you next one. See ya.